ओके सो वी आर स्टार्टिंग आई होप यू ऑल कैन हियर मी can you hear now okay so should i restart okay okay i'm restarting so uh, now what i was trying to uh, discuss with you all is that yesterday we have done the process that we have uh, that we have understood that this is the process which is actually carried out while we are trying to conduct any research and ultimate output of that research is that information which we can use to make decisions which are probabilistically more accurate let me tell you one very important thing about it when we are talking of doing research when we are talking of generating some information as a solution to our problem that information is not always exact but what we are trying to do by conducting this research is we are trying to minimize the error that is an important word we are only trying to minimize the error but we are not eliminating it and the reason is that because we cannot eliminate it so this process that we have understood yesterday actually it involves lot many complex things into it lot many tools lot many techniques into it we will be talking of uh, softwares that will be used we will be talking of tools that will be used we will be talking of techniques that will be used and all these techniques somewhere has its root in statistics so it is very important for us to know and have a basic understanding of statistics that was the question that i was trying to ask and my simple question is that uh, how much uh, understanding of this basics of the research do you have and when i'm talking about basics of research i am just trying to understand your understanding on measure of central tendency uh, i mean mean median or standard deviation dispersion okay rajat is not familiar with statistics okay so uh, what about uh, vijendra and manjula okay so you have done mean median mode short while but have forgotten basics we know red in schooling 
that's fine. So just uh, writing on to those uh, basics, Vijendra is not very much familiar with stats. Okay, just uh, as uh, the basic idea that I'm getting out of this discussion is that not very frank you people are with statistics. So uh, I'll just give you a basic idea of what mean, median and mode is. Uh, basically what we do uh, in general world is that we have a uh, lot many things before us and these things uh, we have to generalize at some point of time all right so without generalizing we cannot come to a conclusion that is our problem so when we are talking of generalizing we have to uh, have a figure which actually represents the entire uh, phenomenon that we are trying to understand Meaning thereby, if I am trying to understand habit of 100 people in all, I cannot say at the end of the day that this 100 people, uh, number 1 likes this, number 2 likes this, number 3 likes this, and I cannot carry it on till 100 people. So idea would be to speak generally, that this generally is habit of these 100 people. Yes, there will be deviations from this general thing that I am mentioning here. But still now we are talking about general thing. So this uh, part of generality actually is provided to us mathematically by statistics. So the basics of statistics starts from mean, median and mode and they are nothing but they are measure of central tendency. Measure of central tendency would mean that a data series that we have. Yesterday we have discussed that in the process we collect data and that data has to be analyzed. The series of data that we have, suppose we have 20 entries into it. So what is, how can we have a single figure that can represent all these 20 entries. So for that we need to have a central tendency of this whole data, all right? Which means we need to have something which actually represents the entire data, and that is something in statistics which we call as measure of central tendency. Which means this thing actually represents the entire data set, all right? So if I can go and I can go on to Excel, all right? Suppose the data set which I am having are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Alright, so let's make it 10. So now measure, ten, measure of central tendency in statistics are 3. These are mean, median and mode. Alright, they all are measure of central tendency which means that mean will, will speak of something which represents this entire series. Alright, median will represent something which represents entire series. Mode is something which represents entire series. So, but these all three are different. And how they are different? Mean is something which in general uh, literature we call it as average. So average of all these 10 data sets that we have. So in Excel, if I have to calculate it, I will type a formula of average. I will take this entire thing and I will close it up and I will have an average. So average of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 is 5.5. So this 5.5 actually represents the entire data set. So we will say that this data series, the central tendency of this data series, the mean of this data series is 5.5, which actually represents the entire series. All right. So now we are talking of median. I'll just try to explain what this is. So median also we can have, and we can same way as we have calculated mean in Excel, we can calculate median and same way we can have mode. So mode also I can calculate and this is there you are. So it is not coming out to be, so maybe it has multiple modes. So let us try to understand what these three things are. Now mean is something which is an average of all the data sets. Median is something which is middle value of data set. And mode is something which is repeated most number of times into the data series. Now the reason that we are getting NA which is not available in Excel when I'm applying mode to this is because that not even a single uh, figure is being repeated more than once. By definition mode is something which is repeated maximum number of times. Alright, so that is why mode is coming out to be NA. So these three things we take as measure of central tendency. In statistics, if I call of robustness, then median is the most robust of all these three central tendencies, which are mean, median and mode. But it is very uh, difficult to calculate it when we have huge, huge data sets. Mean is something which is which comes second to the robustness when we talk of all three central tendencies, but it is something which is easier to calculate. 
and hence we take mean when we are trying to analyze data and research there is one more very wonderful uh, one more reason which is very wonderful to take mean and one of the most advantage of mean is beautiful advantage of mean is that mean consider all the entries in your data set meaning thereby it will not leave any data entry untouched while calculating the mean all right which means mean has been calculated like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and till 10 divided by 10 which means every data set has been included in its calculation when we talk of median it generally will be a middle all right the middle uh, entry of it so which means that i will calculate 5 5 all right so 5 5 entries are above 5 entries are below so in that case when we have an even number we will calculate 5 plus 5 divided by 2 something of that sort so then we will have 5.5 so this is uh, general about what mean median and mode is so when we are trying to do some research whenever we are applying some tools whenever we are applying some techniques the ultimate agenda of it would be to give a general figure to give a central tendency to give something which actually we can say is represents this entire data set and that is what we say as a result because generally in research what happens we take sample size of 100 of 200 of 1000 of 10000 of 50000 we cannot say that this 50000 have this different 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 things we have to say one thing that is generalized thing that is central tendency that perhaps represents the entire sample that we have taken up all right so this was basic about mean median and mode and there is one more very important thing which we have to understand uh that is something we will come to know when we will study this presentation of ours so just before going ahead uh is it making sense okay so let's go ahead with our lecture uh, vijendra mode would be a entry which has been repeated most number of times so in data set that we have taken we did not have any single entry which has been repeated all right so suppose our had our data series been 1 2 3 4 4 4 4 5 6 7 8 then 4 would have been our mode because it was repeated most number of times all right so that is mode for you make sense okay so now we go ahead without wasting uh, much of the time now we will try to understand how statistics comes into picture so first of all i have a question for all of you uh, what do you think that when we are doing research what is the single most important factor into it now suppose i have 100 people i am asking 100 people similar thing and they are giving me some responses all right so uh, these responses i have to analyze and i have to come to a conclusion and that conclusion will actually be my result will be my output so what is that single most important factor that actually is making lot of trouble to me and because of which in fact i have to uh, carry on and do this research without that it would have been very simple and we would have said okay uh, this is it and it is done no need to carry out research and all so just to give an answer to it what do you notice in this slide what do you notice in this slide homogeneous sample rajat said homogeneous sample rightly said now this is these are pen all right they are very homogeneous in nature they are looking very similar to each other all right so they are not different from each other that is something that we are coming on to now suppose if i ask you that i want you to tell me what is property of this pen all right so what you can do is you can pick up one pen out of these you can only study this pen which is blinking on to the right hand side of your screen you would just study it and you would say that all pens are like this right again repeating it because this all pens are similar you can pick up one pen out of it what if these pens are 1000 and 1 crores in number you will just pick up one pen 
as in shown on the right hand side of your screen you will just study it thoroughly and you would say that all pens are like this which means central tendency or the generalization of this whole stock of pen you can actually arrive at just studying one pen and that is because they all are similar now another example now you see this thing now there is a slight change into these pens different companies different colors they are having so can you now pick up one pen and say that these old pens are like this or this old pen would be like that perhaps a little difficult making things a little more complex now you have a bunch and bundle of pens here can you pick up one pen and say that see all these pens are like this perhaps no and if i delete the word perhaps i would not be wrong so the thing that we are arriving at is this variation this variation into things actually makes our life hell as a researcher now if i have to give you a characteristic if i have to give you a general ability if i have to give you and talk about central tendency of this bunch and bundle of pen which is shown to the right hand side of the screen i perhaps have to pick up more than one pen i hope you will you all would agree with me picking up just one single pen would not make me uh you know capable enough to talk about the characteristic of this pen the very fact that they are all different from each other i would be requiring more than one pen to talk about them and this thing is something which we call as variation and the problem is that when we are trying to study say human behavior say knowledge economy that you are doing when we are doing research we go to people we take people as our sample so let and we ask from them certain questions and my problem is had all the people that i am asking questions from had they all been equal and similar to each other suppose 1.2 billion people living in india today they all would have been equal i would have picked up only one out of this billion people and said that all people are like this but that is a myth i am living in that is a fairy tale that i can imagine had it been like this i wish if i could have painted them but that is not possible the very fact that we all are different from each other all right getting back to pens i cannot pick up one pen and say that all are like this i cannot pick up one gentleman one individual and say that all are like this so this variation which we all have among ourselves is something that makes our life hell all right so this is an important thing to understand otherwise we would not be having doing sampling we would not be having doing sample size we would not be having generalizing the results we would just pick up any one of them and said that all are like this but this variation is something that is creating lot of lot of lot of problem for us all right now when we say that we all are different all right when we say we all are different then it would mean that we would require more than one individual to be picked up in order to generalize the results right so as we were doing that pen case when we have very different kind of pens in our bundle we have to pick up more than one pen in order to generalize the result as we all are different we would need more than one individual to be picked up in order to generalize the result suppose i am doing uh, something on to the entire country i know that my country is varies with every 10 kilometers language changes behavior changes skin changes language change everything changes so my attitude change my learning change if such is the vastness of variation in my country then i would need every kind of variation to be included into my sample so that the result which i generalize actually represents the entire thing let me be again repeating the same story we will be talking of central tendency we will be generalizability i can only generalize when i have considered the variation that this old people are having among yourself so if you are sitting in say in madhya pradesh you are doing a study in madhya pradesh you have to have individuals of every demography in order to generalize result onto the entire state if you leave one important part of it you would not say that these results are applicable to all because you have not included those different different people into it and unless you do not do it the sample is not representative that is a technical word that we say 
we need representative sample and representative would mean we have to cover this variation the bottom line is we have to cover this variation which people are having among themselves and to cover this variation we have to pick up people of different attitude of different perspective of different thinking so that we can cover this variation and hence we can generalize the results all right so if i have to cover this variation which is a problem for me that would mean that i would require a very large sample if i am doing a nationwide study all right but if i require a large sample i would be wasting much of the time manpower and resources i would require more time to complete the study if i would be going and doing large sample i would be requiring a lot of manpower which will handle this data resources needless to say would be huge so that initially and exponentially would actually climb up your cost all right so if you as someone will try to understand or want to understand any individual any part of the country you would require a large sample and if you actually are going for a large sample you would be escalating your cost so this cost factor comes into play and it is a big factor all right so now do we need something here and answer would be yes we would need a sample size which actually should not be that big that it escalate my cost to a vehement point so what i am trying to tell you is i would perhaps require the minimum possible sample which can explain maximum the variance now this becomes my problem i have big 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 nation before me i have to do a nation wide study i would i want to have the minimum or the smallest possible sample before me which can explain the maximum amount of this change all right now this is my problem and when this problem we encounter as a researcher it is when statistics comes into picture statistics says see i will help you in choosing the smallest possible size that you should pick up in order to explain maximum amount of the variation maximum amount of the change into anything that you are trying to study all right and statistics helps us in this by one of the important concept of statistics that we call as sampling distribution and now we will try to understand sampling distribution so does it make sense to this point little heavier okay so um, that's good that you have understood it so far so let me uh, try to take it little forward now uh, i will be going into something which is known as sampling distribution so this is where we are thinking of having a sample which is smaller in nature so that i do not sky up my cost which can explain maximum the variance so statistics comes into picture and says okay hey i will help you in doing that and the concept of statistics that helps us in doing is sampling distribution though when i say connecting statistics to research this is the very fundamental and initial point when we require statistics to do it though we will find that at every point of time when we are trying to execute the process of research we will be requiring statistics but this is perhaps one of the initial phases when we would require statistics all right now let us try to understand what is sampling distribution i just take an example and the example is suppose there is a class and the class has 58 students into it all right now what i want to do is i want to tell the people what is mean height of this class or what is the general what is the average of this class and central tendency about height i would like to tell you this is this is the class of 58 students and height of students in this class is generally on an average is say 170 cm all right so this is something what i would like to do it now one way of doing it would be to measure height of every individual student pen it down student number 1 height 165 cm student number 2 height 172 till 58 and then i make a average out of it all right and then i say 
this is the mean height of this class all right now here since this sample or since this entire population is small 58 is the only uh, total number of population that I have about which I am going to summarize the result, it is easier for me to go to each and every individual and study them. But think of the time when you are trying to do this research for a district level where the number goes into lakhs. You cannot expect to go to each and every individual and measure the data. Now if you do it in statistics we call it that we are doing census. All right. So census would mean going to every individual and recording the results and then getting an average out of it and says okay this is the thing but we cannot do it because when we run the numbers in lakhs and crores we cannot afford to go to each and every one because of the very reason that it requires manpower it skies up the cost and so many things so we generally what we do is in order to generalize the result we take a sample suppose uh, out of this 58 number of students that are there in this class i pick up five people all right and I pick up these five people, I will study these five people and I will on the basis of these five people would say that this is the average height of this class. Just taking a hypothetical example. All right. So now my question to you would be how many possible combinations can I make out of this class of 58 students if I make a group of five people each? I hope you got the question. My question is 58 are the number of students. I would like to make a group of 5 students each. How many groups can I make? Anyone have any idea? Rajat, Manjula and Vijendra, any idea how many groups can I make? If I have the total number of students is 58 and 5 is the sample size that I am taking. Any idea? Are you there? 11 samples. Okay, Rajat said 11 samples. I can take it, take out of it. Uh, and Rajat, uh, uh, the way that I think that you would have done it is that 5 plus 5 plus 5. So 5 multiplied by 11 becomes 55. So this is how perhaps you've arrived at this figure of 11 samples, right? Okay. But, uh, uh, Vijendra says 12 groups. Uh, I am afraid that both these answers are wrong. Okay, just let me try to explain it to you. Now, suppose, okay, I am just going back to Excel. Now, just going back to new sheet. Now, I have A, B, all right, C, D, E, all right, and now I have number of people as 1, 2, 3, 4, and these are 50 people. Or 58 people whatever you may say so I have suppose these are 58 people now these are 58 students now one group obviously I can make first five this becomes one group let's make it yellow all right one group can become this let's make it say uh, let's make it blue so that way we can keep on making the groups and we would say as Rajat said 11 groups but then still we are left with three people that we cannot make. Now cannot I make one more group of this thing? These are also five. Two, three, four, five and six. This would also become one group. All right. And let, let me call it as green thing. All right. So let, let us call it as green. So the earlier group I found was one to five. Second was six to ten. Then I can have a group two to six. I can have a group three to seven. And I can keep on forming this group. So the possible number of combinations that I can make perhaps are larger than what we were thinking about as 11 and 12. All right. So this is something that we call as possible combinations. There is something in statistics that we, uh, yeah, Manjula said very right. Permutation and combination. That is something that I was arriving at. So there is something which is known as permutation and there is something which is known as combination. So do uh, you guys have an idea what is difference between permutation and combinations? Permutation and combinations, any idea that uh, how do we do it? What is basic difference between combinations and permutations? And in order to arrive at the number of possible groups that we can form out of 58 students of so 5 each, what should we apply? Should we apply permutation or should we apply combinations?
permutation or combination okay so uh, let's let's go ahead without wasting much of the time uh, see permutation and combination are both statistical ways of arriving at the number of possible combinations that you can make out of a possible population of a specific number here we are talking of 58 as total number of students and we are trying to make 5 which is a group size or let me call it sample size all right and this is total students right so this is something that i am arriving at so i would like to know now the permutation combination both talks about the number of combinations that we can make the only difference between these two is in combination order does not matter in permutation order matters so which means if these are five people i have to if i have to take groups of two people each then a b and b a these two are not equal are red are not equal when i'm talking of permutations but in combinations a b is equal to b a which means so this is combination right and this is permutation right so this is the basic difference between permutation and combination so this would be green this is possible that's why i'm calling it green so in combination a b is equal to b a so whether uh, manjula and suppose rajat they form a group so whether manjula comes first or rajat comes later or rajat comes first or manjula comes later that doesn't make a difference if that is the case then we are talking combination but when order matters to me i want only rajat to come first and then manjula then i will be talking of permutation so when i'm talking of possible combinations that can be made for five sample size out of a total population of 58 i would essentially be talking about combinations okay so how many combinations can i make let's do simple calculations so i will do combinations for 58 students of sample size 5 and these are the possible combinations that i can make which are 45 lakh 82116 these are the possible combinations of 5 as a sample size from a total population of 58 that's what actually i was trying to explain to you now when we are talking of 58 which is a smaller number then the possible combinations reaching to 45 lakhs what to talk of when we will be talking of the population or studying entire city entire district entire nation where the population goes to millions lakhs so that is why this number is important to us and that is why we require statistics so these are the possible combinations right so going back to our this thing now this is something that we have arrived at that these are the possible combinations that we can arrive at which are 45 lakh 82,000 that is something which we have also seen in excel when we have actually calculated these number of combinations 58 and 5 all right so the formula and statistics for this would be nc5 n would be the total number of people which is 58 c5 so 5 is something which the sample size that we are trying to draw out and see would represent combination so that is how we have tried to do it so uh, another thing that i would like to show you is that if you are talking of permutations where the actually uh, order matter then you see how much will be the difference and if i do a permutation to this the number would be humongous so you see the difference because a b is not equal to b a so when in combination this is treated as one combination in permutation this would be treated as two combinations and hence the number is too large so this is something that we are arriving at here we will be talking of combinations and the possible combination that we can make out of this is 45 like 82116 okay now understand carefully we are trying to understand sampling distribution so if now we have done mean if I can take first sample out of 45 lakh 82,116, all right. This is first sample out of 45 lakh 86,115. So there are five people on, only into it. I can take their mean height. I will measure mean height of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's call it x1, x2, x3, and xn. And here is 5. I can actually arrive at something which is mean of first sample which is let's call it a all right rerunning 
I have 45 lakhs with 2,116 possible combinations. So I take first combination which has five students into it. So these five students have their heights. So I can take mean height of this first sample. All right. Similarly, I can take mean height of second sample. Let's call it A2. Similarly for A3, for A4. And if I keep on measuring mean height of these all possible samples. So I will be having these values as A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A and till A45 like it 2016 which would mean now I have 45 like 82,116 means available with me. Alright. These means are nothing. Understand it carefully. These means are nothing but these are means of all the possible samples that can be drawn out of a population of 58 and the sample size that we are talking of is 5. Alright, so have you understood this point? It's important for me to know. Make sense? Vijendra, when we are talking of uh, how do we arrive at 5 in this example, uh, we will uh, actually be doing a session when we will just try to understand how to arrive at sample size. So we will discuss it then. How do we arrive at this size? But uh, now we will just try to understand sampling distribution. All right. So does it make sense? That, but we have done now the mean A1, A2, A3 till A45 like A2116. Does it make sense to all of you? Okay. So uh, now going back. So when I have this much of entries. This is something that we have done. Now I have 45 like 2116 entries with me. If I can make a relative frequency distribution of A1, A2, A3, AN and A45 like 2116 now this frequency distribution will be called as sampling distribution. As simple as that. So I hope you all are aware what is frequency distribution. Hmm? Frequency distribution you people know. Frequency distribution. Okay, Rajat said no. A frequency distribution, Rajat, uh, is nothing. But suppose you have a data set. All right. A data set. Suppose you have one, two, 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 three, four, five. So if I can go back to Excel, I have this thing, which is one, two, 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 three, three, four, 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 five, six, seven. Now suppose this is a data set. All right. Now here frequency distribution would essentially mean an entry or an observation is repeated how many times. So 1 is repeated once, alright, 2 is repeated 3 times, alright, 3 is repeated twice, now 4 is repeated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, alright, and this then 5 is once and 6 is also once and 7 is also once. So if I can plot a graph taking x-axis as these things 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 and I can make a simple bar chart of it how many times what thing has been repeated now that will be frequency distribution. So if you can look at this now, if you can look at this curve, alright, if you can look at this curve now you will see A1 has been repeated how many times? A1 has been repeated about 5 times and that is why A1 has a building kind of a thing coming up 5 times. Alright. So similarly A2 is also repeated sometime and that is what has been depicted in this. A3 has been repeated this. There is a middle entry somewhere in between this graph and that is something. Now you can see this thing here. Now that is something has been repeated maximum number of times. All right. So this is its frequency distribution, maybe say 25 or 26, but this is a hypothetical thing that we are talking about. So essentially what we are doing is this 45 like 82,116 entries, which are mean of all the possible combinations has been drawn and plotted as a frequency distribution. All right. When we do it, this is something which we call as sampling distribution. Alright. This is something that we call as 
sampling distribution. Now, so this sampling distribution when we have drawn, it has some essential properties associated to it and I want you to understand it clearly. Now what these properties are, understand it what I am telling. I will be sounding a little complex but once you understood it you will say it was good. We have 45 like 82,116 means of the possible samples that we have drawn out. One of the important properties of sampling distribution in statistics is mean of A1, A2, A3, A4, AN and A45 like A2016 will actually be the mean height of the class. Alright? Again repeating it. So if I can have the possible number of samples that I have drawn of a specific size out of a population and if I can take mean of all those samples and if I take mean of all those means then that mean would be the mean height of the class. Complex? Make sense? It's fine. Okay. So this is something that we are arriving at. Now this is one of the important properties of sampling distribution. So that is how we can actually arrive at mean height of the class that I was trying to study. I still reiterate the fact that I could have gone easily to all the 58 students individually and would have calculated their heights and then would have averaged them and then would have told that this is the mean height of the class. But now I am taking this example which is smaller in number because we are trying to understand the concept but in real life this number which is 58 that we have taken here actually is huge, is huge in thousands, in lakhs. So this is mean height of the class. So there is a concept uh, which is known as standard deviation. So standard deviation in statistics would mean that on an average how the observations are scattered around the mean. Just try to understand it. Now suppose if I take this thing, this middle thing as the mean which there is all probability that it would be the mean only. Alright. So how the observations are scattered around this mean. So this thing in statistics is known as standard deviation. There is a specific formula by which we can calculate it. Now suppose there are some entries which are represented as a n. Alright. And there would be some entries which would be a 45 like 82, 2016. Alright. So now if I am talking this a n, this is this much far away, you know, from this mean. So this scatteredness when we are trying to see, this is something that we call as standard deviation. And it is an important thing for us to understand because when we have initiated our talk today, we were talking of variation which is something which is making our life very difficult to live as a researcher. So this is an important measure that we have to carry out. So now having understood standard deviation, another important property of sampling distribution. Now the mean of all these means would be the mean height of the class, but standard deviation of all these means would not be standard deviation of your class. Now that has to be very clearly understood by all of you. And this is a theorem in statistics which speaks about it that mean of all these would be actual mean height of your class. But at the same time, same is not true for standard deviation. It has its applications when we are doing some uh, calculations. Maybe uh, if we come across something, we will talk of it. Alright. Now, another important part of it is, now we have the sampling distribution. Now this sampling distribution of mean that we are talking of is always a normal distribution. Now this always an important, always is an important word. So normal distribution has hundreds and thousands of applications in statistics. And it is this normal distribution that I will be talking about a lot in these 10 sessions at least. Because what if I am talking of factor analysis, what if I am talking of other tools and techniques they have a hidden assumption somewhere that data may not be absolutely normally distributed but that has to be nearly normally distributed only then we can apply certain tools and techniques all right so where we are arriving at we are arriving at that we have picked the five people out of 58 class we have had these many combinations of each combination we have a mean when we have plotted a frequency distribution of this means we came across something which is a sample, which is something which we call a sampling distribution and the sampling distribution of mean is always a normal distribution so when 
we have actually arrived at something wherein I can essentially write that sampling distribution of means is a normal distribution. So that means that all the properties of normal distribution, all the advantages of it, I can actually apply onto sampling distribution. All right. So have you heard the term normal distribution? Probability in statistics? Any one of you? Okay, Manjula said no, Rajat said yes. Uh, probability, uh, as the name suggests, is something that uh, gives us uh, the likeliness of an event to occur. So we will not be going deep into it, but uh, no, when we talk of normality, normality talks of certain distributions. So you might have heard of normal distribution, you might have heard of poison distribution, you might have heard of uh, discrete distribution. Now this uh, uh, distribution that we are talking here, which is a normal distribution, uh, is also called as continuous distribution. So if you have heard the name continuous distribution, that will also do. But uh, it, it, we just need to be aware of the properties of normal distribution and that will do for us. We need not to go very much deep into it, uh, uh, um, you know, because it itself uh, is a very complex phenomenon uh, to talk about when we are talking about probability. So uh, for us, it is important to understand the properties of normal distribution. All right. So that is something that we will try to arrive at now. So this is something that we have already done. Now a normal distribution looks like this. It is a bell-shaped curve which has this huge bump in the middle of it. All right. And then these things go. Now you, you can see this part of it and you can also see this part of it. Right. So these two end parts of this normal distribution, though you would be looking at this normal distribution as if this lag which is coming down here is touching x axis as you are seeing here at minus 4 or at plus 4. But this is not actually the case. In normal distribution, this thing which is coming down never touches x axis. So there is always a space, all right, which actually is not seen here because I have zoomed it up and this line has become a little wider and hence it is touching x axis, but actually it is not the case. All right. So this is normal distribution for you. And normal distribution is a probability distribution, and the properties of this normal distribution is that for a normal distribution, understand it clearly all the measures of central tendencies are equal all right so what do i mean by that is we have three measures of central tendency we have mean we have median and we have mode if any distribution is absolute normal distribution then mean median and mode would be equal to each other all right that is something that we are talking about and they will actually be sitting at middle portion of it this is all right, so this middle part, which is the bumpiest part of it, is actually mean, median, and mode of it. All right, so this zero thing that you're looking here, you do not emphasize onto it because this is Z thing. We will not be talking of it now. But we need to understand that for a normal distribution, mean, median, and mode are equal. And standard deviation of a normal distribution is always one. Well. That is something that we have to notice it down. And it is a curve which can be studied. All right. And another important property of this curve is that we can actually study the area under the curve. Now suppose, now this is 1 and this is minus 1. Now if I am to study how many observations do we have between minus 1 and 1, I can study it and I can talk about it by studying this area which is under this curve between minus 1 and 1. And table talks about that for Z, 1 and minus 1, the total number of observations covered are 68%. For 2, observations covered are 95%. And for Z equal to 3, observations covered are 99%. So this is just we should be understanding about normal distribution. So what essentially we would be doing is we have talked of uh, sampling distribution. Sampling distribution actually of means is a normal distribution. So that means all the properties of normal distribution we can apply onto sampling distribution and we apply the properties of normal distribution sampling distribution then we can actually uh, arrive at a appropriate level of sample size uh, that should be adopted for any given study so that it 
should explain maximum variance possible and should be taking the minimum possible sample size so when i'm saying minimum possible sample size that might not be true but it would take appropriate sample size so we, the word we will use here is appropriate though it will not be a minimum sample size all right so this is something that i have lined up for you today i hope well, you have understood it all all right so uh, this is uh, about normal distribution from my end so till here if you have any questions then please let me know and when we will discuss tomorrow we will discuss from this point only and we will try to understand uh, how do we uh, calculate size of sample from there so this is it uh, uh, we have understood today that how statistics comes into picture when we are trying to understand it so tomorrow i think we should be sitting at same time Uh, Manjula, uh, to your question, how do we do sampling distribution when the numbers are large? Now, this is an important question and I would uh, expect uh, that this question would be asked. Now, see, what happens is we have to understand, uh, you have to visualize all these things, right? In the sense that we actually are never ever able to form a sampling distribution. It is a hypothetical concept in statistics that we write for. I tell you the reasons because the population that we are studying we never ever had exact number of this population and even if we have exact number of population then the kind of combinations that we are forming up are actually huge so you think of when we have 58 as population I do not find that even a village would have thousands of population if you are trying to study a, a village all right so it would have thousands of population so eventually if you talk practically it would not be possible for anyone to draw a sampling distribution but it is a concept you know it is a concept which talks of that if we can do that we will arrive at this and that will be a normal distribution right so riding on to this thing we will actually use the properties of normal distribution to understand it now just to give you an idea that what essentially we are dealing with here now this thing is this, if you keep on increasing, now this figure actually talks of the number of possible combinations that you are having for a sample size of 5 and for a population of, for a population of 58. Now if you keep on increasing the number, now suppose uh, I have uh, this thing, now suppose these are, one, uh, these are 58 in number, right? Now if at all, uh, I have to understand, now see, just to explain you now this is combination I am doing 58 are the number of students if I am taking a sample of one right and this is something which I am doing right so there you are this is something you just have to understand it now this is something that talks about uh, just let me do a little bit of changes into it so these are the numbers now what essentially I have done is when I have 58 number of people, when I have taken one as a sample, so I can possibly make 58 combination, that's it, all right? When I have taken two as sample out of 58, these are the possible combinations. And we were sitting here at five, wherein I can make these many combinations. So you see, when I am going to increase the size of the sample also, so even at a sample of 18, you see the number of possible combinations that can be made. So these possible combinations, having them done and getting their means is next to impossible task, all right? So the thing which I'm trying to convey to you here is that sampling distribution we do not done actually, but it is a concept that we use, but still it is a very powerful concept on which we have to write it on. So it has been proved statistically and it has a theorem associated to it, which talks about uh, and it has been tested on many many samples that it will always be a normal distribution if we do sampling distribution of mean right so uh, this is something that uh, we, are, we are we are talking about here uh, and one more thing one more interesting thing uh, that if you uh, if it would excite you then it is that suppose I have this 58 
happen, right? Which is the population, uh, you know, figure. So if I divide it by two, suppose if I take a sample size of 29, this is the sample size at which the combinations would be highest. And from this point, if you keep on increasing the sample size, the number of combination would now decrease. Now you see here, it would be somewhere here. So when you're talking about 29 sample size, now this is the possible number of combinations that you can make. But if you decrease, if you increase the sample size from here, if you make it 30 out of 58, now see, it has started decreasing. So in 31, it is 26. In 32, it is 22. So it goes on decreasing. And if you do 258, it again becomes 1. All right. So that again means that just gives us some very influential idea about that even if we are trying to do a census, even if we are trying to do a census, then uh, first of all, we should not do it. All right. Unless it is very much important for us to understand each and every individual. But the kind of addition that we will be doing by picking up a sample which is more than half of your total population would actually nothing add nothing to your results. All right. So suppose I have these 50 of students and if I'm taking a sample which is more than 29, mathematically it is there that it will actually not add up anything to your results. But one more, uh, you know, condition comes into picture. The condition is that a lot depends on your standard deviation, which is your variation. All right. So variation, uh, if it is a considerable extent, up to a considerable extent, then increasing your sample size beyond 50% of your population would actually add nothing to your output. So uh, it would be total waste of money and should never ever increase your sample size more than half of your total population. But even the question is that why would I go to half of the population? Because it still is a bigger task for me to do. For a country of 7 billion population, I cannot go to half a billion people and ask my questions. Right, so still I would require a smaller sample to be catered to from home. I can ask my questions and can I and I can generalize the results. So that is something which is food for thought. All right, so uh, that is it. Any other question? Okay, okay, Manjula, thank you. So should we sit uh, again tomorrow at 12? Okay, so tomorrow we will be uh, sitting at 12. Thank you for your time. And I hope that you would have uh, understood and make a meaning out of it. So see you tomorrow.